What's up guys, it's Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down how wide receivers can beat a DB who is faster than them, okay? So we're going to be talking about how you guys can pair your routes and releases together, and how you guys can get more separation against a DB who's very fast when you have to run a route downfield like a hitch and go, like a fade, or any kind of double move. So I hope this video helps you guys out, but also, fellas, if you're a wide receiver and you want to come get some work in with myself and my staff of coaches this offseason, we are going to be traveling out to five more states across the country for two days long quarterback and wide receiver training camp. So we just got done with our camp in Columbus, Ohio's great turnout. Now we're going to be coming out to Chicago, Illinois, then Dallas, Texas, Nashville, Tennessee, Salt Lake City, Utah, and then Los Angeles, California. Fellas, these are not those big showcase camps with 150, 200 guys, and we just run you through a combine and time you on a stopwatch. This is two days of training, four hours each day where we cover position-specific drills, techniques, and things that will help your game improve. So check out that very first link in the description below if you guys are interested. Let's get started with this video. So first thing you got to do when you're facing a guy who's a great DB or a great or athletic DB, I should say, is you got to pair your releases together and make your routes look the same. So we're looking at two clips here from Sky Moore. So he's going to be doing a little hesitation diamond release, and then he's going to do the exact same release, but run a fade. And they look the exact same. So it's against the same DB too. Let's play this thing full speed. So he hesitates, takes a three step on that diamond and gets the DB to flip his hips. So now we got the same scenario, same type of coverage inside shade but what does he do he hesitates then takes off and go runs right so when you guys can hesitate and run off that fade and make it look exactly like the diamond that db is going to settle to the inside so let's talk about why so when we come off of here and he gives this little hesitation move db's lined up inside shape obviously does not want to give up a slant but where he will turn his hips is when you attack the outside shoulder so skyboard does that he closes the distance he gives this little hesitation and then he takes off one two three and those three steps that he takes are fast they're in full stride and his hips and his shoulders are committed to that break all three of those things you guys is what tells this db that he's running a fake all three of those things makes him think fade. So what's he going to do? He's going to open up the gate because he doesn't want to get beat on the fade. And this might be the first time that we use this type of release. So again, when you guys are running against a faster DB, when you guys are going up against somebody who's quicker than you, you got to make sure that your technique in the details is what will get you open. Because if he's fast, DB's still at a disadvantage. It does not matter. He starts out with his back turned. It's not like he's starting hip to hip with you and it's a foot race every single time. It is he is trying to read you and get a gauge on you. And where he gets where his speed helps him out is recovery speed is if you got separation but then you're maybe you're trying to keep separation run over the top or maybe you got him to flip his hips and you need to get out of the break but how we can get him to flip his hips or how we could get some separation so i could make him pay after the break is from pairing my routes together and making my releases look the same. You can't be predictable against a good athlete because that good athlete will rely on his athleticism. And if he knows what you're doing before you even do it, it is an absolute wrap, fellas. Keep yourselves unpredictable. So we saw that release, right? So he hesitates, gives the diamond, right? Attacks the outside shoulder, closes space, gets him to flip. So now how do we build off of that? So what he does on this next clip, we already played it. Same type of coverage, inside shape. But now maybe this DB has seen it a few times. Maybe he's ex expecting this type of move. Again, maybe he's always threatened by the slant because we took him on a slant and scored a touchdown. So how I can build off of this is I maybe come off. Now, I do the same type of hesitation. Instead of taking three steps on the diamond, maybe he wants to sit to the inside. He's going to be a little more disciplined now. Psh, I could just slide and take off. I got him now. He's sitting to the inside. He's trying to guess my route. And when we can get a good athlete guessing, a DB who's faster than us guessing, I automatically have the upper hand even if I'm not faster than him because he's trying to guess what I'm doing. And if he's going to guess wrong, he's at a 50-50 chance. He could guess right or he guess wrong. And I feel confident in the fact that if I make my releases look similar enough, I could get him to guess wrong every single time. So that's what he does. He does his little hesitation, and then instead of taking three steps, he just goes. If that DB wants to stop his feet and he wants to play this guessing game, so be it. A lot of people ask me all the time, well, coach, what if I do like a diamond release, right? So that's where you take three steps. So you would go right, left, then right, and you attack his outside shoulder, you get him to flip and you slip back underneath. A lot of people ask me, well, coach, what if I do that diamond release, but he just sits right there? That's when you'd come at him with something like this. If he wants to guess correctly, if he wants to sit to the inside, the next time I have a fake call, the next time that I know I'm running a route downfield, I'm going to have it look the exact same. I'm going to give the exact same hesitation. I'm going to make him think, oh, I've seen this before. I've seen this slant before. And then we just burst up to the outside. And when we could get him to hesitate, if I could get 
get him by a step. I know that my quarterback could put it in a good spot and I could win on this play. That's a great example of Sky Moore pairing releases together, fellas, to get that DB to guess, get him to slow down so we can't rely on that athleticism. He has to honor his discipline. He has to honor his technique. And that is where it can get really fun for a guy who knows how to pair releases together. So fellas, that's got to be a must. Let's play this thing again, full speed one more time. Great job by Moore, closing the space, bursting upfield, making the two releases look the exact same. So now, fellas, last clip I want to talk about is a double move. So what if you're going up against a guy who's faster than you on a double move? What do I do? And again, it all comes down to the technique and it all comes down to the details. So many wide receivers, especially at the high school level. And, and this video may not apply to you in a couple more years. Maybe you're a fast wide receiver. Maybe you're the fastest guy on your team. But I guarantee you when you get to college, there are 50 other guys on that team that were just like you. They were the fastest players on their team. Now they're playing that next level college ball. Maybe on your youth team, you were one of the better athletes. Now you make that jump to high school. Oh man, it's a bigger pool of kids. There are a lot better athletes here than my youth team. It's the same scenario, no matter what level of football you jump. College guys goes up to NFL. That's a, that's a roster of however many guys who are all the best players on their college teams. So no matter what level you jump up, there's always going to be that guy faster than what you thought. And so when you're in this level of college, like you're going to be going up against guys who are fast. And how you get separation is the details. The details is what will get you open. So when he runs this route, he's going to be running a hitch and go. The go portion of this route, not the hitch, not the stem, the go portion is what will help you win against quicker guys. So let's play this thing full speed. So he comes off, he bursts up to the hitch, drops his hips, gets the DB to hesitate, but he does not lose that separation. He does not get caught on this thing. Yes, the DB stumble, but let's talk about it in a situation where maybe he doesn't stumble. When you guys are running this route, the details matter. The little things matter because you might be caught up on a hitch and go, oh man, this guy's faster than me. I got to get up into the route. Maybe he's squeezing me to the sideline. So what guys will do is at this break point on the hitch, they'll just chatter their feet. They'll just do a quick beat of the drum, chatter their feet, and then they try to go accelerate. That DB didn't hesitate. That DB didn't stop his feet. He's going to be able to recover if he's faster than us. So when we drop into the break, we got to get that DB to stop his feet. So how I do that is by actually dropping my pad level, actually sinking down because he's watching my hips. He's a disciplined guy. But when I actually drop down and get him to stop his feet, I know where I'm going. He doesn't. I automatically have a step ahead of this guy. If that DB is faster than you, so what? You are a step ahead because you have the benefit of knowing where the route's going to end. And when you drop like this and he hesitates, you better keep that separation. So many wide receivers get killed when they're going up against better athletes because they'll get that DB to hesitate, but then they won't, get, they won't keep separation. They'll get separation for a split second, but because that guy's so fast, he'll recover. But I think it's because the wide receiver didn't keep his head down. Yeah, he didn't accelerate. He didn't have that mindset of going. Like if we're going to talk about, like, let's say everybody loves to talk about 40-yard dash, the difference between a 4-4 and a 4-6 in, in an actual game is not huge. On paper, it looks, it looks like it's a huge difference. Two-tenths of a second? Come on now. You know a second's not even that long. So in this situation, if you could just get the DB to hesitate, it's like getting a head start on him. So if he's fast and you, so what? My technique is what's going get to get me open and what's going to put me in a position where I could widen the gap with this DB. And that's exactly what he does. No different than like, and again, it doesn't have to be a hitch and go. What if you're just running a fade route? You got this kind of coverage. You want to attack his leverage. You want to give him a move where you actually threaten him inside and get him off the platform. So now I can keep my head down and go. I got him to hesitate. Let's go make him pay for it. That's what I'm trying to say, fellas. So know that you automatically have a step ahead on this DB. You automatically can get separation because you know where you're running. It don't matter how fast he is. It matters that you do the things you need to do to sell the route and you do the, th you do the things you need to do to keep your separation on the route. Play this thing again, full speed one more time. Great job here by Sky Moore dropping the hips, getting that DB to hesitate, and then accelerating up vertical to win on that route. All right, fellas, I really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If uh, you guys have any questions, don't hesitate to leave those in the comment section below. We uh, always appreciate the feedback. Always great to hear from you guys as usual. And again, fellas, we're coming out to five more states, Chicago, Illinois, Dallas, Texas, Nashville, Tennessee, Salt Lake City, Utah, and Los Angeles, California. Two day long camps, fellas. Again, not those camps where there's 150 kids. It's going to be small groups and it's going to be a lot of detailed coaching for two days, four hours each day. So check out that very first link in the description below. We'd love to have you out. I'll see you guys next time.